Andrew Carnegie's family decided to settle in Allegheny, Pennsylvania, a suburb of Pittsburgh where they had friends and relatives. Their ship landed in New York City, which he found bewildering. New York was the first great hive of human industry among the inhabitants, of which I had mingled, and the bustle and excitement of it overwhelmed me, Carnegie wrote in his autobiography. Next, the family traveled west by canal and steamboat. He moved into two rooms above a relative's weaving shop, which his father took over, but the business ultimately failed, putting the family once again in need of money. At the age of 13, Carnegie worked from dawn until dark as a bobbin boy in a cotton mill carrying bobbins to the workers at the looms and earning $1.2 per week. A year later, he was hired as a messenger for a local telegraph company, where he taught himself how to use the equipment and was promoted to telegraph operator. With this skill, he landed a job with the Pennsylvania Railroad, where he was promoted to superintendent at age 24. Not just ambitious, young Carnegie was a voracious reader and he took advantage of the generosity of an Allegheny citizen, Colonel James Anderson, who opened his library to local working boys a rare opportunity in those days. Through the years, books provided most of Andrew Carnegie's education, remaining invaluable as he rapidly progressed through his career. Thomas A.C. Scott, superintendent of the Western Division of the Pennsylvania Railroad and Andrew Carnegie's boss, initiated the future millionaire's first investment when he alerted Carnegie to the impending sale of 10 shares in the Adams Express Company. By mortgaging their house, Margaret Carnegie obtained $500 to buy the shares, and soon the first stream of dividends began rolling in. While associated with the railroad, Carnegie developed a wide variety of other business interests. Theodore Woodruff approached him with the idea of sleeping cars on railways, offering him a share in the Woodruff Sleeping Car Company. Carnegie secured a bank loan to accept Woodruff's proposal, a decision he would not regret. He ultimately bought the company that introduced the first successful sleeping car on a U.S. railroad. By age 30, Carnegie had amassed business interests in ironworks, steamers on the Great Lakes, railroads, and oil wells. He was subsequently involved in steel production and built the Carnegie Steel Corporation into the largest steel manufacturing company in the world.